We were impressed with Jim Cramer's interview. I don't know if you saw it with Mark Zuckerberg on Mad Money the other day, really laying out their sort of business case for the metaverse and, and their sort of AI world. There it is. We're showing part of it. Do you guys at Jeffries think that Meta is a buy right now? Hey, good morning, Brian. Yeah, so I, I was absolutely able to uh, to catch that interview, and I would I would absolutely agree with you. I thought Mark Zuckerberg laid out the the foundation for the metaverse and how he's planning to go ahead and capitalize on the investments that he's outlining for the next five to ten years, and you know put things in perspective. You know, you have Meta trading at twelve times earnings, right? You talked about that Russell rebalance going into the value index, and now you have the ability to to underwrite Meta at five times EBITDA, 12 times earnings, right? Very reasonable valuation. Uh, you've got very real concerns in terms of the advertising budget slowdowns. You've got very real concerns on TikTok, but at the end of the day, we certainly think that, uh, that that's factored into, uh, into, into current valuations, given, uh, given where you're underwriting Meta. Yeah, I thought that, I thought the interview was, you know, was so important because it provided clarity on what exactly they're doing. Obviously, investors haven't given them a lot of credit for it, at least as far as the stock price go. Are you comfortable with, with Facebook's valuation here? Yeah, so, so put things in perspective, right? You have Meta investing anywhere between 10 and $15 billion a year in what they call Facebook Reality Labs, so F FRL, and that is their investment in the metaverse. So despite this investment, which is significant, so call it 10 to 15 billion a year for arguably at least the next five to seven years where they are generating no revenues, despite that, you're still underwriting Meta at, uh, at five times EBITDA. So uh, Brent Phil, our analyst, uh, continues wow. to recommend shares of Meta overweight. And uh, I certainly think that makes a lot of sense when you think about the investments that they're making that are so significant. And despite that, we're talking about a sub-market multiple for Meta. You guys also recently removed NVIDIA from your favorite names list. Why? So this goes back to my framework in terms of where we are right now with respect to uh, with respect to tech. I think this is a really interesting opportunity to be getting long software secular growth when you think about what's been transpiring over the last you know call it the last three to six months with all of the extremely strong forward language from the Fed. You have obviously stagflationary concerns with where we are right now, and and look at the broader backdrop. So you think about going into a potential recession, you think about going into uh, tougher economic times with tight financial conditions, semiconductors are a really tough place to be. So you're starting to see semis break down relative to the S&P. You're starting to see software outperform. It just makes it a very difficult environment when someone like an NVIDIA is levered so significantly to the cycle and we're really worried about a weakening consumer and they derive such a significant percentage of their revenues attributable to PCs and flowing graphics cards. So uh, it, it's, it's a really difficult backdrop for semis, and NVIDIA trades at a very aggressive valuation from my standpoint.